and welcome to this video and in this video we will be looking at a third example on how you can obtain the solution or the root or the zero of a certain function f of x is equal to zero using the Newton option formula and if you have not checked my previous videos be back to check them also leave your question leave your comment and remember to subscribe to the channel now let us start this one off we are told uh, it's from the paper June July 2018 and it's for electrical engineering that is that we have studied we are told to show that one of the roots of the equation x cubed minus 8x plus 3 is equal to 0 lies between x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3 and use Newton action method to determine the root correct for the surfaces what we should know is that if one of the roots of function of x is equal to x cubed minus 8x plus 3 lies between lies between brackets two three then the product of function of a and product of function of b should be less than zero. This is then we are going to take x equal to two to be our a, or that is a is equal to two. We are, and then we take x is equal to three to be our b, or that is b is equal to three. That now we can have function of a is equal to using our, our function a is 2 2 cubed minus 8 times 2 plus 3 I will be able to keep on punching on, on a calculator because when I am creating a video speed is of essence this will be negative 5 you can check that on your calculator function of b this will be equal to we have this 3 now, 3 cubed minus 8 times 3 plus 3 this should be equal to 16 and this should be equal to 6 now you can see if we take the function of a what time is the function of b this will be negative 5 times 6 which is equal to negative 30 which is less than zero. So we have proved that one of the roots of the function f of x is equal to this lies between 2 and 3 because the product of function a and function b are less than zero. Now we move on to the next step. Uh, we put the, this in the interpretive formula, which is Newton option formula. We say if you not take uh, f of x, you already know f of x is equal to what? Is equal to x cubed minus 8x plus 3. So that function of x n as we did previously is equal to x cubed n minus 8x n plus 3. Let us differentiate that. First derivative of x n is equal to 3x squared n minus minus x but we know from the Newton action formula from the Newton action formula we know that a better approximation to the root of a function f of x is equal to zero is given by the previous approximation minus function of the previous approximation divided by the first derivative of function of the previous approximation. So that now we put that in the formula, we say a uh, beta approximation to the root xn plus 1 will be given by xn minus that which is the x cubed n minus 8xn plus 3 or over 3 
x squared n minus 8. Let's get the LCM. Xn plus 1, or a better approximation to the root is given by now. The LCM is 3x squared n minus 8. So what do we do? This is over 1. This, this divided by 1 to be this times now, the upper, the numerator, which is x and open bracket 3 x squared n minus 8 close that bracket this value divided by this to be 1 now you have a bracket there then you have 1 open the bracket with this with this one so it will be x cubed n minus 8 x n my plus 3 plus 3 be careful with science then you can really mess you up you can easily miss most of the marks in this question if you are not careful with your positive and negative signs let us open this bracket or if you make a simple mistake you really lose a lot xn times the 3x n squared this is the 3 x cubed n minus 8 xn open the bracket minus x cubed n plus 8xn minus 3 all over what we have there 3 x squared n minus minus 8 what can you now do now what we simplify this is x n plus 1 is equal to this and this will simplify to 2 x cubed n almost similar to the other one I think uh, this and this one will cancel out so that now we have minus 3 all over 3 x squared n minus 8 and then we start iterating taking taking n is equal to 0 and we have x naught now this time now we are not given x naught so how do we get how do we find x naught uh, we are going to subdivide the bracket containing the root. Subdividing the bracket containing the root. We are going to say x naught is equal to 2 plus 3 over 2. That's what we call subdivision. This is 2.5. Now taking taking n is equal to 0 and x naught is equal to 2.5. Now let us start iterating. Let us start approximating. We are going to say the first approximate x1 should remove this now. Remember, learn to use YouTube effectively. When you're watching these videos, it's very important to use playlists. I usually label my videos as lesson 1, lesson 2, lesson 3, up to the final lesson. So ensure you use YouTube playlists. Knowing some of these things make a lot of difference between succeeding and failing. For example, if you just pick video 3 without watching video 2 or video 1, and the concepts of video 3 are based on video 1 then you will not really understand what is happening you say this is complicated, I cannot um, understand it but it's because you do not start from the, the concept themselves so I sure you use my YouTube playlist and always remember to watch my videos online it really, really helps the channel now if you put n is equal to 0 you will have x1 is equal to twice x naught cubed minus 3 
और वह थ्री एक्स स्क्वायर एन माइनस थ्री होते जाए एक्स नॉट एक्स वन इज ए ट्वाइस एक्स नॉट यहाँ से इस टू पॉइंट फाइव क्यूब ने माइनस थ्री और वह थ्री टाइम्स टू पॉइंट फाइव स्क्वायर माइनस एट ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट टू फाइव ओवर टेन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव इज इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट सिक्स टू एवं नाइन जीरो सेवन you are told to work out correct four decimal places. At least make sure you are working with more than four decimal places. Personally, I'm using six. You can choose to use five if you want. But that's the other choice. Now let us uh, take in n is equal to one. We have our x2 is equal to 2x1 cubed minus 3 or over. 3x squared n minus 8 it now becomes twice times 2.627907 cubed minus 3 or over 3 times 2.62 Seven nine zero seven squared minus eight. This will be equal to thirty three point two nine six one or over twelve point seven one seven six eight six, which now finally becomes. 2.618094 We are correct how many decimal places? By now, we only correct one decimal place. 6, 6. Now let us move on to the next iteration, which is x4, x3. Now taking, taking n is equal to 3 now, not 3 but 2 x3 is equal to 2x 2x2 cubed minus 3 over 3 x2 squared minus 8 which is equal to 2 times 2.61 uh, this is the power of 3 minus 3 over 3 times 2.61894 p squared minus 8 which now becomes I will not find the calculators for you I will just give you the answer you can punch it 180 uh, 3, 5. So that now we are going to how many decimal places. If we are to run this one, it will be 8, 1. If we are to run this one, it will be 8, 0. So this one is 8, 1. This one is 8, 0. So let us do one more so that we can be sure that that's why we are supposed to add it. So we say we're taking taking n is equal to 3 now. We have x4 is equal to twice x3 is cubed minus 3 over thrice x 3 squared minus 8 which is equal to 2 times 2.61A0 35 minus 3 remember when I make a small mistake when I'm transferring uh, do not transfer that to your working personally when I'm working I'm usually very keen and now I'm just creating a video and I really work that out. I may not be very, very keen, but always be very keen. If you make a single mistake, 
hath he said with uh, the party and everything else he had done. It will not converge, but instead it will be diverging, which now is equal to 32.888 584 divided by 12.562322 This is a um, final response 2.61834 if I'm proud of so now you can see you are correct to how many decimal places the first five decimal places are similar. So you are correct five decimal places. Even if you are dead eight of this will be eight zero eight zero. So that now we can find let's say the root one of the root to that uh, problem or to that function of x is equal to two point six eight zero. We are supposed to give our answer. Yeah, this one. 2.61 is we are supposed to give our answer correct to four decimal places. So that is it, that's how we go about it. Sometimes you'll be asked to prove that a root lies between two values, and that's how we do it.